Well, hello everybody and welcome to Lunch Break Live, real talk about obesity, food addiction, recovery, and what's really eating you. This would be take two because Facebook kicked me out the first time, so let's see if we do a little bit better at the top of the show here. On today's program, why wait for weight? Just do it now. But before I get into the show, let me do a little shout out to all of the folks who are attending uh, WLSFA 2017, Making a Difference in Portland, Oregon. Hi, everybody up there. I cannot believe I am not with you for the first time in I don't know how many years, but I hope you have a magical and memorable and amazing, remarkable weekend, making new friends, um, deepening friendships with older friends, and just learning a whole bunch about how to celebrate life um, before, during, and after weight loss surgery. So Weight Loss Surgery Foundation of America, if you want to learn more about what's going on or kind of track all of the fun, hashtag WLSFA2017, and then you'll be able to follow it all. So hi to all of you guys, and if you're not up in Portland, maybe you're watching my very favorite reconstructive surgeon, Dr. Timothy Katzen, who is performing reconstructive surgery right now on Periscope. I probably shouldn't tell you that, or you're going to flip over to him. I haven't even gotten to see it yet, but anyway, so he's over there doing that, and you got people up at, you know, in Portland, you know, making a difference, and so everybody's making a difference everywhere, and you guys, hopefully, you're going to make a difference with me here while I make a difference with you. So, with that long setup, let me just put this out there for all of my newer viewers. I am Carrie Dela Cruz. I am, uh, let's see, 2007 gastric bypass post-op, living life in recovery from obesity and compulsive overeating as twice the woman in half the body. So that is me. And let me see, I want to find out who all is here. First of all, welcome, welcome. I am grateful that you guys have the time and have taken the time and have chosen to be with me today. It means the world to me. I want you to know that. So welcome in Sarah and Nancy and Lisa and my mama. I am so glad you guys found me. Uh, I'm really, I hate talking alone. All right. So here's what I want to know from you guys. I want to know who's here. So if this is your first time joining me live, Okay, you may have seen the show on demand, but if this is your first time joining me live, show me some love, click the heart button. Okay, so now this may not pertain to anybody for the reasons I mentioned at the top of the show. You guys may be off doing other things, but if this, this is your first time joining me live, shoot me some hearts. Okay, now if this is your first uh, time joining me absolutely ever, oh, okay, so hearts. Mom, is that from you? You're here. Hey, Teresa, I'm glad you joined. So is this your first time on the show, either live or on demand? Let me know. Shoot me some, uh, shoot me some hearts and let me know. Um, yeah, Mom, I know. No sending me hearts. You've been here to every single show, I think, except one, and that was only because you were in surgery. So, all right, now I want to know for the rest of you guys who's here, you know, like where you're from and what you're – why you're here, I guess is what I would say. So here's what I need you to do. Pay attention. All right. Hey, Jerry, you made it. I missed you yesterday. All right. Um, here's what I want you guys to do. Keep it short, but just give me where you're from and like why you're here. So for example, I could say California addiction and recovery or treating obesity or Long Beach or whatever. So just give me a shout out there to kind of let me know or I don't know why I'm here, or I was referred, or somebody told me about you, whatever you want to say, you know, keep it simple, keep it short and sweet, but I just want to get a sense of where you guys are all from, and if you're joining me on demand, not live, go ahead and leave that in the comments as well, because I want to see who's watching at other hours of the day, all right, so I'm going to put that out there, because again, I always say this, but it really matters, this is an interactive show, and uh, Facebook Fullerton, I motivate you. Oh, Teresa, thank you. Well, trust me, you guys motivate me as well. Because if it were not for you, I might not be doing what I'm doing. Probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing every day, which is I may be living it. But boy, let me tell you, I dig deep every day to come up with an original program. You know, this is all original programming. I do not have it written out when I wake up in the morning. Um, I spend a little bit of time preparing and putting down notes and stuff. But it is um, off the cuff, um, you know, truly extemporaneous uh, in a lot of ways. So thank you guys. Because you're here, you motivate me to come up with something and be fresh and um, informative every single day. So thank you so much. Washington State, Nancy. Mama's from Bellflower because you want to be here. I love that. 
and um, to keep motivated in recovery from food addiction and compulsive overeating. Right on. Hey, where are you from in Washington State? My very best friend in the whole entire world lives in Stanwood. I love me some, some Washington State. My very favorite city is the Emerald City. I love Seattle. Lancaster, New York, I help you with recovery. Yay, Sarah. All right. Jerry, I know where you're from. You're from down south. And to keep your head in the game, right on. Love it. Love it. All right, did I get everybody? Now, you guys may be commenting to me, and it's just not showing me yet. And I will see it offline and go, how did I miss that? So, Tacoma, right on. Okay, thanks. And Costa Mesa. All right. So, again, if I'm not commenting, it's because it's just not showing me, and it will probably come later because you guys are very, very good and very responsive. All right. So, with that said, let's see here. Where do we want to go? Uh, on with the show. Now, um, when I first thought about this show on the way in this morning, I mean, the origin of it, the, the thought process was a, a lot of people wait for a certain weight. You know, they're like, when this happens, I'll get to do that. I can't wait for this. And this is, my, you know, and I thought, well, why are we waiting? Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. So um, that was kind of the motivation or, or whatever, the, the little seed, you know, that was germinating so it could take root for the show today. Um, so let me kind of go through what I've written about it and let's see if some of this can come together into a meaningful way that we can all use over the weekend especially. Now a lot of people do focus on a goal weight, right? I mean if you are in the weight loss community, whether it's surgery or medical weight loss or, or otherwise, okay, there is a, a diet, whatever, focus is on goal weight always, right? And I, I think it's because they believe that something magical will happen when they see that number staring back at them from the scale, I'm, I'm not really sure. Or maybe the clouds will part and like the angels will start singing hallelujah, you know, because the size on their pants says like size 10 and all their dreams will come true. I'm, I'm not really sure. But honestly, oh, maybe this is it. When they weigh their goal weight, everyone will like them. They'll win the lottery and they'll never be unhappy again. Maybe. Or, okay, no, wait. What about if they never achieve the number on the scale or they never see that number on their clothes? Oh my gosh, then what? I hear you guys saying, well, they'll just be failures. And you know what? You could say it about yourself. Well, I'll just be a failure then if I don't hit my goal weight. That's easy, right? I either hit it or I don't. And if I miss, then I'm a failure. And if I make it, then I'm a success. Really? Well, so in other words, there's all or nothing mentality, right? Now, Doctors say that our health is improved dramatically. So if we are morbidly obese, if we lose 10% of our body weight, our physical health is tremendously improved, okay? And, you know, obviously you can have complications and you can have other things going on, but as a rule, okay, 10% of your body weight is what you, if you lose that, then you're going to be in far better shape. So if you were 300 pounds and you lose 30 pounds, your body is in much better shape. You're in much better health, okay? 10%. Um, but your goal weight wasn't to lose 30 pounds. Your goal weight was to lose like 150. So if doctor said losing 30 for now is going to help you, but your goal is 150, then I think there's a disconnect. Don't you? And now look, I don't want this to be a show about goals and goal setting or how to set goals particularly. I hate that. I really do. And you know what? There are experts out there. There are people that are geniuses at goal setting and achieving goals and accomplishing goals and all that stuff. And they can tell you how to do little flow charts and vision boards and pie charts and all of this stuff to tell you how to achieve goals and how to track it. And you can use programming software. That is not what this show is about. What I am hoping to accomplish here is to encourage you to see what you've been calling goal weight in a different light. And you might change the way in which you refer to your goal after you hear what I have to say. Okay, So that's, that is my pie in the sky. I guess that would be called an incredible goal, which you'll learn about in a moment here. So here's what I kind of briefly looked into because I thought it was kind of important to know what the heck I might be talking about, whether I like to talk about it or not. So there are different kinds of goals, which I think really they call them different types of goals and it's true you know you can have long-term goals and you can have short-term goals you can have lifetime goals and you can have temporary goals and you can have all that kind of stuff right but among that is like goals that are they're comprised of certain parts certain actions certain processes things like that that help you to accomplish or achieve that goal so for example you have what's called an achievement goal. Now, a lot of us want to put weight loss in the achievement goal category by saying, 
lose 150 pounds. There's my goal, okay? But interestingly enough, when you have an achievement goal, your goal, your job, is to actually describe the results you'll have when you finish the goal. That's actually what an achievement goal is. You have to describe the results you'll have when you finish the goal. Okay, so in other words, I can't just say I wanna weigh 150 pounds. I am supposed to describe what will happen when I weigh 150 pounds less, okay? Uh, action goals, okay? These are specific actions that you're gonna to take to accomplish your achievement goal. So once you've looked at that achievement goal and said these are the results that I want to achieve as a result of this thing, uh, then my action goals, these are the steps that I have to take in order to get there, okay? Limit goals, I love this. Set boundaries. We need to have healthy boundaries. We talk about it every day, right? If we're people pleasers, we gotta learn to say no, right? If we're people haters, we gotta learn to say yes, whatever it is, we gotta limit boundaries. No, you can't just you know, walk in my house any old time you want, or no, I'm not gonna put up a wall you know, and leave you out, so boundaries. So these are called limit goals. We also have rate goals, okay? A lot of us are very familiar with rate goals, but the definition of it is actions that are repeatedly done over time. Okay, that's interesting because a lot of us will set some rate goals, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute, but, and we'll, we'll do them for a time, but we don't continue to do them. And these actions are supposed to be repeatedly done over time, okay? When we stop doing them, well then, we're not achieving that goal anymore, are we? Exclusion goals, again, love this, never thought about this. These are things you won't do in your you know, larger, greater goal of achieving this you know, achievement goal up here. These are things you won't do, and each of these is a goal. Everything that I'm talking about here is a goal. It's a smaller goal that leads to a bigger goal, okay? Incredible goals. I love this one. Incredible goals are highly optimistic. Okay, sometimes they're far-fetched. Really, really aggressive, okay? So I kind of think that that sometimes um, we, we look at our goal, you know, which we were calling this goal to lose 150 pounds, as an incredible, far-fetched, impossible to achieve goal. So we really never thought we could do it anyway, which is kind of interesting. I kind of thought about that. All right, so. Here's what I'm thinking. Maybe we should reconsider or like reclassify or rethink that that goal that we have. And if it's a goal weight, okay, let's look at that again. So for example, right, in our community, this weight loss community, uh, the words goal and weight are always used together. They're used as one word, goal weight. So if you ask me, I think it should just become a compound word, goal weight like keyboard, makeup, redhead, okay? So goal weight, the way we're using it, you know? I, don't you agree? I'm just thinking. All right, how are we doing so far? I'm checking in. Everybody's still awake, everybody feeling good? I see a smiley face there, all right. Just gotta check in and make sure I'm not alone here, you know? All right, I see my mom. All right, she just shared my video. Thanks, mom. I see thumbs up. Okay, right on, right on. We're doing good, we're doing good. All right, let's keep going. So here's my question. I'm gonna start digging deep. Thanks for the hearts, you guys. All right, is losing a certain number of pounds a goal? That's the question. Based on the stuff that I just said, is losing a certain number of pounds a goal? For a lot of us, like I said, it's an incredible goal. I'm gonna lose 200 pounds in one year. Could be, it could be highly unrealistic or improbable, unlikely, or impossible. For some people, it can happen, and it has, especially after bariatric surgery. 200 pounds in one year. That's a pretty incredible goal, though. You know, it's pretty optimistic and maybe even could be considered far-fetched. Certainly an aggressive goal, all right? So for others, maybe it's a rate goal. Think about this for a second. Weight, they use this weight as a rate goal where they go, I have to lose 20 pounds before the cruise next month. So that's a rate goal that says 20 pounds by, 20 pounds within 30 days. That is the rate goal. Um, or how about this? Maybe it's a limit goal. I won't allow myself to gain more than one pound between weigh-ins, right? So I don't know how you know realistic those are or if they're unrealistically um, burdensome, you know, whether they are achievable or not, you know, it seems to me that it's so easy to 
miss the mark on that or, or let it go, you know, um, or fail. That's what we define it as, failure. If we don't hit the goal, we fail, right? So if I don't lose 20 pounds by the cruise, what, I'm not going to go on the cruise? I'll probably go on the cruise and then I'll say I'm miserable because I don't look good at my bathing suit, blah, 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 blah. And then, of course, I'm going to gain 20 pounds on the cruise because I'm going to eat everything that's not moving too fast to get a fork into at the all-you-can-eat 24-hour buffet. All right, see what I'm saying? Could be a problem with how we're, how we're defining goals. All right, so I'm thinking maybe the weight shouldn't really be a goal at all. Maybe. All right, just work with me here. Let's see. Maybe something like this. Okay, so let's talk about, we're talking about an achievement goal, which was to describe the result of what's going to happen when you get there. Okay, so think about this for a minute. Maybe it could be, I'm going to treat my obesity so I can improve the quality of my life. That's results oriented. I want to improve the quality of my life. Maybe I can fill it in too. I want to improve it physiologically, you know, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. I want to improve my life, the quality of my life on all of those levels. So that could be an achievement goal. And then you could have like action goals underneath that, right? So you could say like, okay, I'm going to start tracking my fitness daily with my Fitbit and I'm going to log each meal and activity. I'm going to make healthy um, food choices and drink more water. So that's those are broad, those are not really, really super specific, but they're broad actions that you're going to take in the pursuit of that bigger goal, which isn't a number on the scale, it is claiming your quality of life that we all so desperately are entitled to and deserve, okay? So maybe then we got action goals, things that we have to do in order to achieve that goal. Can't sit back and expect it to happen, right? Then we're going to add maybe a rate goal. Okay, so we say, okay, um, I'm going to treat my obesity by going to the gym a minimum of three days a week, um, and I'll walk two miles a day. Okay, so we're putting in hard numbers there. That's a rate. You know, by this, within this period of time, I will accomplish this amount of stuff. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Okay, you could add a limit goal. Very important. Um, you know, I won't eat after 7 p.m. at night. Um, Oh, and an exclusion goal. I like this one, okay? I will not give myself a cheat day each week where I can eat whatever I want. Oh, okay, there's an exclusion. Uh-uh. There are no days of the week where I don't have to be healthy. So these are these supportive goals, actions, beliefs, behaviors, things that we do in the pursuit of that greater goal, which is not to achieve a number on the scale. Now... Could we quantify it and say a part of doing some things that I want to do would involve um, a specific number? Let's say, you know, like there's a weight rating on a chair or a stool that you want to stand on in the kitchen and it says, okay, it's 200 pound maximum weight rating. And so you would say, I want to weigh, you know, no more than 200 pounds so that I can stand on that chair in my house and it won't break under me or you know what I mean so you can have specific numbers they say okay you can't weigh more than this if you want to ride this ride you know or fly in this helicopter or whatever okay uh, if you weigh more than this if you're bigger around than this so your measurements then you're gonna have to buy an extra plane ticket do you see so there is a time and a place and uh, to assign a specific value especially like I told you my friend that I met a couple of days ago who has a very specific number of um, you know weight that she can weigh and her measurements what she can't accept in order to maintain her health and not get into the um, red zone with her medical condition okay so but you have to look at that sometimes it's just I want to weigh what I weighed in high school well I, uh, I don't know about that I don't know how I feel about that see I don't, I don't think that's such a, a motivating great idea you know for us to do because for starters I am 50 okay I am not you know 16 anymore dug on it and I am not gonna weigh what I weighed in high school and I'm certainly because I'm like an inch and a half taller for starters and I'm gonna look you know what and the red hair weighs like at least like another pound and I'm just not the same person I was in high school anyway so that's kind of arbitrary but a lot of us do that I want to weigh what I weighed when okay so we got to change our thinking so maybe we um, let's see here let's see maybe weight shouldn't be the goal at all um, and Here's why I'm talking about goals. There we go. I already made it past that page. Let me tell you guys, let me just, between you and me and the tree, today I had this goal of what I wanted to do for the show and then my company had other goals for me. And so it was that up until five minutes before showtime, I had people in my office wanting to talk about work so that they could have achieved the goal of eating lunch while I'm doing my show. So 
Just want you to know. Rough patch in the road sometimes. All right, here's why I'm talking about bowls today. Gosh, I want to know too. What did I say? So often I hear people say, I'm only 20 pounds away from goal weight. And I think to myself, then what? What will you do in 20 pounds that you aren't doing now? What will be different? Other times I hear people say, oh, I can't wait till I have surgery so I can start doing all of the things I'm learning. Why? Why can't you start doing the things that you're learning now? What is this magical thing about this surgery? Is there like a switch that they're going to flip in there that says, okay, it goes from off to on. On means you get to start doing all of the magical and wonderful things that you're learning. As long as it's off, you can't do them. I don't think so. So in other words, what, what is that goal all about? Results. Results. You're saying I have a goal of having surgery so I can start doing things that I'm learning to do now. I don't think that follows because you could start doing those things right now. Granted, I understand when we're talking about physiological goals, when we're talking about, you know, there's weight on your knees. That means I cannot walk so far. You know, I've got weight on my knees. I want to be able to walk a mile, but I can't do that because my knees and feet hurt or I need to get my knee replaced or whatever it is. I do get that. But I'm talking about a lot of the work that we do here. In fact, all of the work we do here is up here and in here. It just is. I talk about all the stuff that we do here, okay? But we're doing it here and we're doing it here. And you could do that right now. I don't care how much you weigh. You can do that. Maybe you're not going to do it by yourself. Maybe you're going to do it in the rooms in a 12-step program. Maybe you're going to do it in a therapist's office. Maybe you're going to do it in support group. Okay? You're not going to do it alone, but you're going to do it. And you don't have to weigh a certain number on the scale in order to start doing this stuff. That's why I'm saying we need to rethink the goals and make the goal about living in recovery. Okay? So let's look at that. All right? I say, why wait for weight? What happens if you set a goal for recovery? How will that look? All right, well, let's talk about the achievement goal, which is describing results when you get there. So my goal is to be in recovery by living life on life's terms, free from the tyranny of addiction, obesity, diets, the scale, and compulsive overeating. That's my goal, okay? I'll even read it again in case that's your goal too. My goal, achievement goal, where I'm gonna describe the results, is to be in recovery by living life on life's terms, free from the tyranny of addiction, obesity, diets, the scale, and compulsive overeating. That does not mention anything about how much I want to weigh at all. I want those things and that is not contingent on a number on the scale. Action. Okay, this is how I'm going to accomplish that achievement goal. Specific actions. I will manage my portions, uh, make healthy food choices, drink plenty of water, exercise, and go to support group and get therapy if I need it, or AA, or OA, Overeaters Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, 12-step program, celebrate recovery, whatever it is, okay? See, that's the action, okay? The limit, the boundaries, what are the boundaries going to look like for if I want this achievement of living life in recovery on life's terms, okay? Well, uh, I'm not going to eat the things that are, are on my list. Yeah, I'm just not. Okay, I've got to limit that. The boundaries are, if they are on my abstinence list, I will not eat them, okay? I will not buy uh, certain things and bring them into my house, okay? So that's, those are the limits and the boundaries, okay? How about repeated actions, a rate goal, okay? Repeated actions. Uh, I will spend one hour at the gym at least three times a week, and I will write in my journal daily, and I'll drink 64 ounces of water per day. Obviously, you can have many more rate goals in here, but this is kind of a distillation of it, okay? Exclusion, things that you won't do. Okay, I won't shoot Facebook Live videos on the free, what? No, wait a minute, that, that's not my goal. No, all right, my goal is to live life in recovery. Okay, so in other words, I will not do things that take me farther from my recovery and closer to my obesity or my compulsive overeating. See? All right, and you know what that looks like. You can fill in the very specific blanks, which means I'm not going to eat the cake and the cookies and the ice cream and the popcorn, which I don't stop eating if I started, and the cookies and the pretzels, and the, I already said cookies once, but I'm saying it again, or the pizza or the french fries or the all of that stuff. Mm -mm. Okay? Those are exclusions, and they're on my list, so they're also limits. Okay, so... The incredible optimistic part of this, which is, okay, 
it's pretty, it's pretty far up there, okay? By living in recovery, I will become the best version of myself by having courage, seeking peace, and embracing joy every day. I guess it's not that far-fetched at all, but it's pretty incredible, don't you think? All right, so here's what I want to leave you guys with today because, man, I'm closing in on it. All right, goals. Yes, even if you are going to insist on a goal weight. I don't think you should. But all right, I can't stop you from doing it. They are made up of rate goals and limit and exclusion goals and action goals. And yes, I even think incredible and audacious goals. So even if your goal is to weigh a certain number on the scale, all that other stuff still matters. Rate, limit, exclusion, action, and yes, even incredible dreams. We've got to dream about stuff, right? So achieving that goal, that whatever that is, which is recovery for me, okay? It involves smaller goals. Remember that. Objectives and milestones and accomplishments and tasks and yeah, even pounds lost. But we have to acknowledge those. We have to celebrate those things. That's what I talked about yesterday, right? Um, are you focused on the struggle or are you focused on the celebration? Are you focused on what you haven't lost or are you looking what you have gained? Okay, this all comes together. All the stuff I've been talking about this week, okay? Don't wait for weight. All right, set a goal, do it now, whatever it is. And I'm going to leave you with these two quotes because I think these are wonderful. I love them. You ready? These aren't my words, but you may be motivated because I am saying them aloud. The tragedy of life does not lie in not reaching your goal. The tragedy lies in having no goals to reach. Benjamin Mays said that. And finally, you must have long-term goals to keep you from being frustrated by short-term failures. And that is Charles Noble. So I'm going to leave you guys with that, let you do some thinking, and remind you that I am not a goal person per se. And yet, I very much have goals. And I very much have achievable goals. And by acknowledging the work that I've done, the actions that I've taken, the limits that I've put into place, the exclusions, you know, the rate goals that I have achieved, I can recognize the power and the wonder and with a great amazement, the goal that I continue to accomplish every single day, which is today when I woke up, I choose to live my very best version of myself today, living in recovery by having courage and seeking peace and embracing joy and making choices that bring me closer to what I say I want. That's my goal every single day. And how great is it that for the last X number of days, since December 30th, certainly, of 2013, I can say I have achieved my goal. So that's it. I'm going to sign off and remind you all to have courage, seek peace, embrace joy, and above all, live your goal of recovery. Remember, you can't stop feeding what's eating you if you don't know what's eating you. I will see you guys next week. Have a marvelous weekend. Everybody up in Portland, WLSFA 2017. You guys rock. Have an amazing time and take lots of pictures. Share the video, guys. See you later. Bye.